Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today I will do some data sufficiency problems on page number 206. If at the end of the video, if you find this helpful, useful, and if you decide that you would like to work with me, if you'd like to hire me as your tutor, you can reach me at keshwaniprep at icloud.com. keshwaniprep at icloud.com. Send me an email and we'll see what we can do. Page 277, let's get going. These, as I told you, are data sufficiency problems. It's important for us to understand that, that we are simply, our job here, we are simply being asked if we have sufficient data to be able to answer the question. We don't actually have to solve the problem, we just have to be able to realize whether or not we are given sufficient data in the two statements. So here's the first one. It says each of the each of the n employees of a certain firm has different salary. In other words, no no two individuals get the same one salary. The question simply is, what is the median? Let's see what we are given in statement one. Statement 1 says median is the 15th salary. Now what do you suppose, what do you suppose we can get out of that one? Median happens to be the 15th salary. What that means is that if it's the 15th salary, is that's the median right here, which is what that means is that there are 14 people on this side who are below the median and the 14 people on that side. What this tells us, so somebody told you the median is the 15th salary, that tells us immediately because you see the problem itself does not tell us how many people we have, it just says it has n employees, everybody having a different salary, but the first statement tells us there are in fact 14 plus 14, 28 and this 15th guy there are 29 people, this n here is 29. That is a useful information, but it's not enough. It's not a worthless information, but it's not sufficient. Statement 1 by itself does not enable us, A, D, B, C, E, does not enable us to find out what the median is. Perhaps if we put this information from second statement together, first and second statement, perhaps we'll be able to figure out what the median is. But right now all we know is that there are 29 people. So, first statement by itself is not enough, that tells us that the answer cannot be A or D. Let's look at second statement. Second statement tells us that the, the sum of the salaries, sum of all salaries, is $913.50. Fifty cents. It's an odd number. Well, it's actually not nine hundred thirteen dollars fifty cents. It's nine hundred nine hundred and nine hundred thousand nine hundred thirteen thousand five hundred. It really doesn't matter. It makes no difference. Do you understand? It makes absolutely no difference. So what this tells us is the sum, sum is nine nine thirteen fifty. Is that enough for us to be able to tell what the median is? If somebody tells us what the sum of the observation is, can we figure out the median of the observation just by looking at the sum of the observation? Obviously not. Second statement by itself is also not enough. What happens if we put the two statements together? This is where they are hoping, this is where they are hoping that you will make a mistake. If the question was, which it is not, if the question were rather, it's hypothetical, if the question were, what is the mean, if they were asking us what is the mean, then Putting the two statements together, we could answer that question. The mean, of course, here is simply 913.50 divided by 29 people. We figured out from the first statement based on the fact that the median is 15 salary. 
divided by 29 and that's, that's your mean. But unfortunately, that is not what is being asked here. We're not being asked to find the mean. We're being asked to ascertain the median. And there is no way to figure out the median. In this case, had, if they were asking for mean, the answer would have been C. But they're not asking for mean. They're asking for median. They're asking for median. And there is no way to figure out the median. The answer is not C. It is in fact E. There is no way we can figure out the median just based on the fact that there are 29 people and we happen to know the sum of their salaries. That doesn't do anything. Next one, number 278. 278. 278, let's see what that says. It says that it's asking us what is the ratio, what is the ratio of for and against. Apparently they just voted for something, some people were for it, some people were against it, and what we're looking for is the ratio of for and against. This is the ratio we're looking for. Let's see what the first statement tells us. First statement tells us the number of people who favored, number of people who what it in favor of the of the of the whatever it is that they were discussing was 60 more than people who were against was 60 more than people who were against it says it says there were 60 more votes in favor of the proposal than against the proposal that's what this equation is is it enough for us to figure out the ratio the answer is no because in the ratio we have two unknown for and against we cannot figure out, we cannot solve for two unknown, two variables, two unknowns with just one equation. In order for us to be in order for us to be able to figure out two unknowns, we have to have two independent equations. We only have one equation. First statement by itself is not enough. A D B C E. Since first statement by itself is not enough, that also tells us the answer cannot be A or D. It has to be either B, C, or E. Let's see what the second statement tells us. Second statement tells us that uh, oh, there were 240 people who voted in favor of it. There were 240 people who, who voted in favor of the resolution. Well, there you go, that's enough. Now we have two equations, two unknown, we can figure it out. We don't actually have to do with it. Our, our job is to be able to simply tell them whether or not we have the sufficient data. And we do have sufficient data. The answer is C. If you put them together, of course we can figure it out. We're not going to do that especially in the real exam. Now, if you want to do this, if you want to do these problems out while you're practicing, it is actually not a bad idea while you're practicing, just to get some practice in math. But do not do that in a real exam. It is a sheer waste of time. They're not asking us what the ratio is. They're simply asking us, do we have enough data to figure out the ratio if we wanted to? And the answer is yes, we have enough data. The answer is C, if you put the two statements together. Just for learning purposes, we can do it out. It only takes a few seconds, but don't do it in the exam. F equals 240, so we're going to put it in here. F, X, X, F, F equals 240, you can see it's very simple, which means the against must be 180, and therefore the ratio is, ratio is 240 to 180, and that's all it is. Divide top and bottom by 10, divide top and bottom by 6. Turns out the ratio is 4 to 3. For every four people who voted in favor of the resolutions, there were three votes against it. But that was a waste of time. Don't do that in the real exam. As I keep repeating, like a parrot. But if you just want to do it for learning purposes, there is no harm in it at home. So what I'm advising you is what exactly opposite of what you hear usually. Do try it at home. Don't try it in the real exam. Okay? Usually they tell you don't try it at home. I'm telling you, if you want to try it at home, that's fine, but not in the exam. 279. The question here is, how many men do we have? Again, it is very important that you have the book in front of you, because I do not read the whole bloody thing. You have to read it yourself, make sure the book is in front of you, make sure you read the problem. The question is, how many men? First statement tells us the ratio of male to female men to women is 3 to 2. Obviously that's not enough. Simply knowing how many, simply knowing what the ratio is from male to female does not enable us to figure out A, D, B, C, E. 
does not enable us to figure out how many males there are. Obviously, it could be any number of them. Maybe there are three, ma three men and two women, or 30 men and two, 20 women, or 3 million men and 2 million women. Who knows? That's not enough. Let's look at the second statement. Second statement says that they need six wins. Well, isn't that nice? Well, that's very touching. Apparently, we need six wins to transport these people, which is fine and dandy, which is fine and dandy, had they told us how many people can fit in each of the vans, <coughs> or if they told us that every van carries the same number of people, and this is the number. If we can figure out, if we could figure out how many people can can be transported in each of the van, then obviously we will know how many people there are. And once we know how many people there are, that's your one equation. There is a second equation, we can solve for the two unknown. But simply knowing there are six vans that are required to transport these people does not tell us how many men are going. The answer is E. So second statement by let's finish it up properly. So second statement by itself is also not enough by itself. The answer is not B. When we put them together, it's still not enough, therefore the answer is not C, it is E. Let's do the next one. 280. Let's see what 280 has to say. Two eighty says we have jar which has red, white, and blue marbles. Red, white, and blue marbles. The question is what are the odds? So if I were to pick one marble at random from the jar, if I were to pick one marble from the jar at random, what are the odds that I'm going to end up picking a blue marble? That's what we have to figure out. Let's see what we have in the first statement. First statement tells us that we have a total of 24 marbles and we are told that 8 of them are red. Well, that's not enough. That's not enough. How many unknowns do we have? We have red, white and blue. We have to figure out there are three unknowns. They gave us two equations. We know the total is 24 which means R plus W plus B is 24 and we know R equals 8. That's just two equations. Simply knowing how many red there are, we need to know how many how many white there are before we can figure out the odds of picking a blue one. We don't have enough information. A, D, B, C, E. The answer cannot be A and therefore it can be D. Since first statement by itself is not enough, we can rule out A and D. Answer would have to be either B, C or B, C or E. Let's see what the second statement says. Second statement tells us that the picking, the odds of picking the white marble is one half. Odds of picking a white marble is one half. So if we know the odds of picking the white marble is one half, so you have to you have to cover this up. You have to delete this from your memory. It doesn't exist. The first statement does not exist. All we know is that we have a jar which has red, white, and blue marble, odds of picking the white marble is blue, uh, is half. Therefore, all we know at this point is that the odds of picking either the red or the blue, red or the blue, is also half because this is half. But we cannot figure out the odds of picking the blue one by itself, by second statement alone. Second statement alone is not enough. What happens when we two put the two statements together? Aha! Now we're getting someplace. Since we know the odds of picking the white is half, that implies the number of white marbles must be 12 because there are 24 altogether in the first statement. So now we know now we know the white is 12, we know red are 8, eight. we can figure out how many blue there are. And once we know how many blue there are, we can figure out the odds of picking the blue. The answer is C. Again, as far as the exam is concerned, this is where you should stop. We are done with it. What the actual odds are of picking the blue marble, we could care less. We do not care at all. Do you understand? Again, just for learning purposes, let's do it out. It does not take that much, but don't do it in the exam as I keep telling you over and over again. So we have, we have red, white, and blue. Red, we were told, is 8. White, we just figured out, is 12. There you go. There's 20 already, which means there are four, there are four blue marbles. The odds of picking blue marble is 4 out of 24, one sixth. That's all. Now you might say, why is he making a big fuss? It only takes 5 seconds. Yes, you're right. It only takes 5 seconds. But 5 seconds here, 10 seconds there. If you keep doing this, 
keep getting, if you get in this bad habit of solving every problem, it will add up. It will be a waste of time. Don't do that. These seconds, these seconds are very precious. The name of the game is to keep moving. 281. In 281, the question is how much is Z? And here is the picture that is given to us. This is not a square actually, this is a rectangle. The way it is given in the picture, in, in the book, I'm going to draw it as a rectangle. We are told that this is a right angle, we are told this is a right angle, we are told this is a right angle, which means this is also a right angle. This is W we are told, this is Y, this is X, Y, W and Z. Z. And Z of course is the length from here, all the way to here. You understand? That, that is how what is given to us and the question is how much is Z? Let's see what we can do. Statement 1 says X equals to Y and Y equals to 1. Statement 1 says, I keep looking at the book, I'm going to make sure that I, yes exactly that's what it is. So let's, let's put it in here, x equals to 1 and y equals to 1. Does that help us to figure out what z is? Of course not, of course not. The first statement by itself is not enough, a, d, b, c, e, cross out a and d, cross out a and d. Okay, so let's, let's look at second statement. Second statement tells us that w is equal to 2. w is equal to 2. At this point, we erase this part. We do not know that x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1. We do not know that. All we know is this is x, this is y, and we know we have we just been told that w is equal to w is equal to 2. If this is all we had, can we figure out z from there? Answer of course is no. Second statement by itself is not enough. But when we put the two statements together, let's see what happens now. Okay, watch what happens. I'm going to change the color. So x equals to 1, y equals to 1, and we are told that w is equal to 2, which is right there. Now, if y is equal to 1, which means this distance from here to here, this distance from here to here is also 1. If we can somehow figure out this part, let's call it x. If we can somehow figure out that part, we can figure out what z is, because z is simply 1 plus x. And we know this distance from here to here is the same distance as from here to here. Because it's a rectangle. Therefore, this is 1. There we go. We're done. We have a right angle triangle. We have a right angle triangle here. This side is 1. That side is 2. In a right angle triangle, of course, we can figure out what x is. It's very simple, very straightforward. We're not going to do that. We have enough information. The answer is C. That's it. Answer is C. Again, this part is not for the exam. As I keep repeating, it's purely for learning purposes. It's very simple. W is equal to 2, which means 2 squared, which is the hypotenuse, equals 1 squared plus x squared. And you just solve for x. It's very straightforward. x squared equals 3. x is equal to root 3. And therefore, z, z would simply be, how much is z? The answer is z is simply 1 plus root 3. That's your z. But that was unnecessary. You're not going to get any brownie point for having done that work. It does not show in the exam. It does not show in the exam any sign of intelligence for having done that work. That, in fact, what we just did here actually would, would in fact qualify as a manifestation of stupidity because it was not required. Nobody was asking about Z. Yes. Do we have inf enough information to figure out Z? The answer is yes, we do. We have a triangle, a right angle triangle. We know two sides, of course we can figure out the third side. 200 and, that was it, 281, 281 was the last one on the page, last one in that on that page, I'm going to stop right here, that's the end of that column. I'll see you tomorrow, tomorrow we'll do some multiple choice exam, multiple choice problems, uh, we, we so switch back and forth, we alternate. Uh, if you found this helpful and if you want to work with me, as I told you before in the beginning of the video, if you wish to hire me as your tutor, you can reach me at Keshwani Prep, that's P-R-E-P, Keshwani Prep at iCloud.com. Alright, bye now.